What's up here at CRS 2023? We are live. We get to go live, which is awesome this year. Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So please join us on these. Let us know where you're tuning in from. We have Mackenzie Fix here, and I'm Kersey Krause, Brandon Morrell, CJ Garten is around here, all for the backstage pass doing live interviews for CRS. Uh, this is so exciting. I heard we got drag to talk about. We got a little bit of both, which just came out on March 3rd. Uh, let's just dive right into music because that's what we're celebrating this week. So a little bit of both. Talk to us about writing that, putting that together, and now being here. Yes. So I've told Brandon this multiple times. I've just told everybody this. You know, I went to Nashville last summer, got to go in the studio with Sal Oliveri one of the nicest people on the planet. And I went and recorded six songs and drag and a little of both were two that he actually presented to me. And I just really liked both of the songs because, you know, I do feel both of the songs are relatable to a lot of people. And I feel like a lot of people out there will be able to relate to it in their own way. And, you know, especially with a little of both, I relate to it so much because, you know, the last couple of interviews I've had, people have talked about, well, you know, how do you relate so much to the song? And I talk about, you know, I'm from a very small town in Virginia, so, you know, that's more simple living, simple, calm, nature, all that kind of stuff. And then you come down to Nashville, which Tennessee is practically my second home, and there's no simple about it. It's so chaos. There's always something on the go. There's always so many things to do. Right. So, you know, people always Different talk energy. about, yeah, people always talk about, you know, well, you're going to have to pick one because, you know, if you go to Tennessee, you ain't going to come back here. And I'm like, who has to say that? I was like, they're both they're both special places to yeah, me, I do so why can't I have both? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come down here on the weeks and go there on the week. <laughs> yeah. So I really think a lot of people out there will be able to relate to this song in their own and you've been so busy around all this music, like seeing you come up on these uh, music awards and like playing shows. So talk to us about being a part of that and, and just celebrating. Yeah, so you know, I've been, I've not stopped doing any kind of music since basically, you know, COVID stopped a lot of people from being able to do music and go out and make a living and stuff. And fortunately, I was able to do what I love to do because, you know, down in my parts, people didn't want bands. They wanted solo or duo acts. I love how country that sounds. Down in my parts. Down in my parts. So I really never stopped. I've been doing weekend shows since 2020. So I'm actually right now currently booked out to the first week of June because I'm going to be moving here at the end of May. So I'm We're so going to gain a true talent. We can't see this here. Yay! I need to move next, right? That's what yeah. I need to do. Yeah. I'm so excited about it. I, you know, it's it's the next step that I need to take. And I think the good Lord will be guiding me every step of the way. And it's just where I need to be so i'm very very excited so if anybody out there has any places that they want me to play at for know. she knows her stuff too hey you do so much in the uh neo-traditional side of things keeping that type of music alive that country movement and there's a thirst no pun intended coming mm -hmm. back for that now people are hungry for that and the more people i've talked to it's a good thing for the business and, and people like shenandoah aaron watson recently who've been on the show have said that people want that you're doing a good job keeping it alive why is it so important for you well you know that's where i got started and you know i got started singing when i was four and i was singing loretta lynn in my little trailer park just going along with the flow of things and, you know i always talk about you know i do really believe that that traditional country sound is making a comeback because you know there's so many different kinds of country now you know, you do have the pop country, you have more rap country, you have kind of the folk country, bluegrass country, all that kind. And, you know, all of us have to just put in perspective, we can't let those old roots die. Because, you know, if, like Loretta, George, Tammy, Dolly, all of them paved the way for country music to even be alive today. So I feel like we should all just always put them into consideration and be like, you know, this is where we came from. This is where country music started. And don't let it well said. Well talk, said. Talk to me about maybe when you put that out there. It's been a good response for a lot of publications, a lot of media, a lot of charts. There's been some good good kind of good chatter behind me yeah. yeah i love maybe so much because you know it'll forever hold a sentimental place in my heart it was the very first country single i ever released and you know my backup singer and guitarist shane begley wrote that song for me and i just loved how that song came out and, you know it's so nice being able to go to shows and actually have people out there being like oh play maybe and i'm like oh thank you so much uh, yeah having people request it and now fast forward the, the the single that just came out a little bit of both 
premiered on Taste of Country, and I'm seeing you very active on this Twitter game, or I'm sorry, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok, the other T social media. TikTok, you were doing lots of videos for drag, and drag is such a fun song. It's such a banger. Uh, and was that kind of when you started doing more TikTok stuff? Yeah. So, you know, uh, my big New Year's resolution for this year was to primarily try to reach my age demographic because, you and know, that's where they're at. Yeah, I know. You know, I always tell people I'm 21 going on 56. So <laughs> it's just one of those things. I, I, feel, that. I, feel, yeah. I feel so old. I really do. But, you know, I started building my social media platforms when I was 14 years old. And I primarily stuck with Facebook because, you know, all my friends were on it, all my family members were on it, and so forth. So that's just primarily where I stuck to putting all of my material out. And, you know, Instagram and TikTok, it's kind of killing me right now because I don't really, I don't know. Like I said, I'm 21 going on 56. So it takes time. It but, does. But it's working. I'm yes. telling you right now, I've seen these videos. It got me to like, go in and click and want to listen to the song because drag is fire so great <laughs> yeah speaking of fire i'm ready for rapid fire i love that let's love do that. some rapid transition fire. out there too as well um let's see what i want to do, it's gonna do we, sports have like, we have yes the first thing you came on was three years ago with <laughs> yeah. us i mean something like that you were the og so She's we, an OG. we're yeah. just happy to have you every time be able to celebrate music and you are welcome on Okay. Talk about the binge watching. What have you, yes. nice, what have you gotten into lately for, for binge watching? What shows? I've been watching RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> I've been watching that, and I actually I binge watched the entire new Netflix series called Twenty Eight Days Haunted. That was so cool. It's like six episodes. I binge watched the entire thing in one night. Do you watch it at night? Yes, it yes, I did. I did. Did you tell me you got into The Last of Us on HBO? Did you watch any of that? Okay, I thought you might. And I love that one. Check it out if you. It's a little weird in the beginning. And then Your Honor with Brian Cranston, who used to be in Breaking Bad. It's okay. another one on Showtime. I think you're getting into just dive into it. Are you a big reader? No. Okay. Not really. <laughs> Not really. All right. So, what's the first song that you've ever sang on stage? Um, were you on stage like before? The, what were you? What were you singing? What was your go-to at that? At that <laughs> well, if we're talking about the first song I ever performed on stage, yes, I guess that would be when I was. I used to do 4-H as a kid, mm -hmm. so I used to do like 4-H, share the fun, do all that. So in fourth grade, that was like. Like when you could enter the share the fun contest and i did rolling in the deep by a day okay so i had done that but what but the was country crazy, version sure yeah but what was crazy about that is like when i did it so something was wrong with our sound system and anytime there was something loud in the mic the music would cut out and then come oh. back in so every time i did that we did it, it would like go away and i was like and i just kept singing the whole time and i was still on point so i was like yeah, true crying. professional, even back in fourth grade. We love that so much. <laughs> All right, favorite cartoon as a kid. What cartoon did you get into? I mean, I watched Dora. Watch yes, Dora, Dora watch SpongeBob. I watched all of them. I just kind of watched whatever was on SpongeBob. TV. Okay. This has been so much fun. CRS 2023. This is day three. We're already kicking it off with artists like Mackenzie Fitz. So this has been fabulous. Thank you for coming on with us. I'm Kersey Krause, Brandon Morell, CJ Gardens running around here, of course, presented by Bangtail Whiskey, Gentle Then Spirits, and Honky Tonk Texas. We'll see you guys very soon. A couple more interviews coming up. We'll be live all going up till noon today. So, yes, join us. Stay tuned for a lot more.